Hey everyone, welcome back to the range. I'm your host today and my name is Matt. Got a body armor test today. One of the things many of my followers like to see. This one's actually steel. This is from RTS Tactical. This is their level three plus steel offering. It's got that fancy tan pseudo FDE color on it for the anti-frag spall coating. If you've been searching online trying to make a body armor purchase and you've been struggling making a decision and you've come across my channel, you've come to the right place. We love testing body armor here. We like to push the limits of a lot of the NIJ testing and do some more of the not so common threats just because we like to see what the maximum capability of body armor is. In this case with our RTS Tactical today, this is a level three plus. It's an all steel offering, it's supposed to be AR 600. It weighs eight pounds, nine ounces, 10 by 12. It's multi-curve, although it's only curved on the sides a couple of times. It's not a true multi-curve like we see with say an e Sappy plate. This does appear to be the buildup coat variant. It's about a half inch thick overall. I'll annotate if it's different. I forgot to mark on the plate how thick it is. For our testing, we like to stick at 45 feet, which is the NIJ testing distance. We shoot at exactly zero degrees because that is the worst possible hit to take on a piece of body armor. Any uh, angles beyond that only increases your chance. The same with trying to stack magazines or other variables that I can't really control on top of it. That only helps you survive. Another thing that I like to do with my testing is we use this cl giant clay briefcase right here. It's got a non-hardening clay in it. We just like to have a compressible media behind our armor here. Usually with steel, you don't see localized back face like with the polyethylene where you have a softball sized fist there. But I just like to have something heavy that these can stand behind so that when you're shooting that it's, the plate's not getting knocked around and you're not just throwing it on the ground or up against another steel target or, or something. Since this is rated level three plus, we're gonna see what the upper limits of our 5.56 threats will be because the NIJ hasn't released their new RF1 and 2 standards, which kind of hope to address the M193 and M855. It's about 65 degrees outside today. We have our Pro Chrono Digital DLX that we like to run so we have that instant feedback for velocity and I've got a giant screen that you guys can see those on. Okay we have our plate positioned on our clay briefcase at 45 feet and we're gonna start with our 556 threats. We have M193, M855, and M855A1. We're gonna use our 16 inch stag here. It has the turbo 556 suppressor on it from Yankee Hill. We're gonna see what these bullets do out of the 16 inch and then if they stop them, we have the 22 inch that will give us maximum velocity across all of these. And then we'll step up to some 308 threats. So the third round will be M855A1. The second is M855. And our first is M193, which typically has the best chance against steel armor. Upper right of the plate will be our first shot. Pretty good velocity there. Now the M855. I don't think I got a velocity off that. And then the A1. I'll have to take a shot off camera of the M855 so we have a velocity. All right, here was our M193. We were far enough away from these other shots from a different test that that's a fair hit, but you can already see, ruh oh, raggy, we have a penetration. Here was our M855, and here was our M855A1. Now this one was only an inch away from this other shot, so that is technically not a fair hit. So if there is a pass through, we will reshoot this one as well as that one. It looks like the 3,200 plus feet per second is the limit for this AR-600 steel. There goes the straps, folks. And... Can I deal the label off? No penetration on our A1 or our 855. There was our M193 there. I think maybe we'll take another shot with the M193, but we'll put the level 3A backer behind it to see if it will catch that. 
Okay, we've added our level 3A backer. It's AR500 Armor Rhyme Leg. So we'll take another shot from the 16 inch with the M193. Then we have a 22 inch TC compass that will take the M855 and the M855A1 shot through. We should be getting maximum velocity out of the 22 inch. So that's gonna be worst case scenario. Thirty-two fifty, right on the money with that one. All right, now we have our 22 inch TC compass. Still got the turbo 556 on there to make the kids and the golfers over there happy. So the A1 will be the second shot and the standard M855 will be the first. Typically, from all the armor testing that I've done, the M855 is usually always defeated by steel armor. The A1 does a pretty good job until you get over 3,000 feet per second. So see how this AR600 handles this. Wow, that's a really good velocity out of M855 today. Huh, a regular M855 was faster than the A1 today. The A1 is a Lake City 2012 lot. I think the Winchester 2017 that I, I don't have a lot of that is a little faster. Let's go see what we did. All right, folks, as always, place your bets in the comments below. Here was our M193. We still have a penetration at 3250. Here was our M855, and here was our A1. I'm really curious if the soft armor stopped the 193 or not. Still have our penetration on the M193, but on our A1 and our M855, zero penetration. Very impressive out of a steel plate. Now, here's a moment of truth. I apologize about the wind in the background. Here was the M193 shot. Ho! Oh, no penetration. It stopped it. This is a 100% Aramid fiber level 3A, like I said, from AR500 armor. It's a rhyme leg. It's a very budget friendly plate. It meets the you know bare minimum specifications, maybe plus a little bit, but it doesn't have any polyethylene backer like the hybrid does, but it stopped it. Very interesting. Maybe we need to start incorporating that in any of our tests when we get a pass through, we follow up with a 3A backer to see if we get any penetration. Now we'll step up to some 308 threats. Now we'll step it up to some 762 NATO, not available to orcas. We've got some Poon Sang or PMC M80 ball surplus. I picked this up a while back, I think from SG Ammo. We should see 2700 plus feet per second out of it. I do see 2800 from every now and then. We're gonna take three shots on the plate with this. So far, the frag spall coating on this RTS tactical plate is held up really well to the 5.56 threats. It's typically once you get into the larger caliber bullets with more muzzle energy that we can start to see that coating separate. So we're gonna take three shots with this and then I think we have two more threats after this to end this test. We've got our Yankee Hill Phantom M2 on here as well. Come on, Rotary Magazine. Let's see. Go to the right side of the plate here. 2739. Not bad. Stupid rotary magazine. A 
There we go. I'm going to shoot the top of the plate now. Just because we have some clean spots up there. My plate's smoking down there, folks. My plate's smoking. Let's go see what we did. Not sure if you guys could see from those other camera angles, but we were starting to get some smoking on that plate, and that typically means that we're starting to defeat the anti-fragmentation, anti-spall coating on the plate. I see some jacket fragments that are stuck in the front of my table here that I don't remember there before but here was the first M80 ball shot very close to the A1 shot that's an inch there that would not be considered a fair hit in an NAJ test but we'll let it fly if there's a penetration we'll retest shots number two and three were up here and I purposely shot these towards the upper part of the plate because I wanted to see if it would break the coating away and it has started to do just that. You can see me peeling it away. I'll get another shot angle of it here in a second. But no penetration whatsoever from those 308 threats. Like I said, M80 ball is the standard level three threat. So if you have a steel plate that can't stop those, you've got some quality control problems. What I've seen in the past though with the hotter AR600 stuff is if you go too hard, then the actual muzzle energy from the bullets impacting the plate can actually crack the plate. Here you can see that coating starting to peel away. It still hasn't peeled completely away, but it's starting to, so it seems to have pretty good adhesion. I think I have two more threats that we can throw at this plate just for shits and giggles. Here's another shot of the coating starting to peel away. Even on this side right here where it took that M80 ball shot. I have two final threats for our RTS Tactical AR600 level three plus plate. This guy right here is M80A1. This is the big brother to the M855A1. It's 130 grain copper core with that steel penetrator tip. The tip on this is actually a little softer than M855A1, right around 49 to 52 ish RHC. It's still a hardened steel. There are a lot of people that think that that's mild steel. That is hardened steel. And we have M2AP and 300 blackout. And you're thinking, Wait, what? 300 blackout? That's not an armor threat. Well, the last time I tested some RF2 plates that utilized a ceramic strike face, this actually penetrated those plates. So we have a 10 and a half inch barrel for the 300 blackout and a 12 and a half inch barrel for the 308. And I've also placed the 3A backer behind it. I think we'll shoot the 308 first. This is our 12 and a half inch Palmetto State Armory SBR. We have a JMAC Customs LAF up front for maximum noise and maximum recoil reduction. Got the SIG MSR RDS up there, Radeon Ambi charging handle. I don't want to put this on here. I'm not sure where I want to shoot on the plate. Maybe dead center towards the bottom. <laughs> 25, 75 was our velocity. I know I don't have to read those. I think you can read the screen by now. I'll grab two shots of the M2 AP just because I don't know where this is gonna hit. So hopefully I hit the plate with one of these two shots. This is a 10 and a half inch upper from Palmetto State Armory. We've got the Yankee Hill Phantom M2 30 cal suppressor on there. Sixteen eighty, and I'm not sure where I hit. I think I hit way off to the right. Sixteen 
we'll go see if we hit our plate with these. All right, here was our M80 A1 shot. Here was the first shot of the M2 AP 300 blackout. And here was the second shot. This is definitely not a fair hit right here. Depending on our results, we have some spots left in this plate. So if there's some iffy things down here going on, we can definitely retest. You can see my table is getting quite beat up. The spall coating has about had it. Place your bets, guys and gals. Need more gals watching this channel. They need to be educated too. What? No penetration, folks. Interesting. That 12 and a half inch M80A1 is also a threat for those RF2 ceramic plates, and this steel plate stopped it and both M2AP rounds. Our spall coating, as you can see, is come off there, but it's still it's still intact. It still hasn't completely separated. So I think they're doing something pretty good with this spall coating. And I see they've got quite a bit of overlap on the outside of the plate. And they have a good amount on the back side as well. It wouldn't be the range if I didn't destroy armor, especially steel armor. Very good results from our RTS Tactical Level 3 Plus. Now our M193 from that 16 inch seems to be the sweet spot for destroying steel, even this AR600. The good data point that we took from this is that if you add a level 3A backer, that it will actually probably stop M193. Our M855 and our M855A1 were stopped, even from the longer barrel, so that's good to know. While the M80A1 didn't penetrate the plate, those higher energy rounds that fragment more when they hit that steel are what tend to defeat the anti-frag spall coating on this plate. I would say the coating did a fairly good job, except when we got to those 308 threats, it's actually not been completely removed from the plate, but it's showing signs of degradation when you can peel it away from the end. Seeing this plate stop M80A1 from our SBR, as well as the M2AP loaded in our 300 Blackout are more interesting data points. Like I said, an RF2 plate that we tested before that had a ceramic strike face couldn't stop either of those from those same barrels. As I get ready to pack up that car and get the heck out of here, I always take a moment at the end of my videos to thank all those who help make these possible. Number one is my Patreon supporters. Number two is RTS Tactical, who again in full transparency, sent me a pair of those to destroy at my will with no strings attached. And of course, number three is you all for watching. Until next time, I'll catch you at the range. Though shows if you buy a level 3A backer that that 3250 feet per second your 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 okay folks as always place your comments as always folks place your bets in the comments below that helps that YouTube logger all right folks come on